Hello, this is Pibble Pusher, and today I'll be showing you how I made my cathedral-inspired temple build. I didn't have a plan or blueprint that I was working from when I built this. I just knew I wanted an open model diorama style cathedral for the final boss fight of my campaign. It's still a while away, but it's what was sparking joy at the moment, so it's what I wanted to build. I started with some half inch XPS foam and cut the corners to make an interesting angle that would funnel attention towards the center of the room. I also made a two-step altar and a pair of balconies. Here are the measurements for reference, as well as how many of each to make. For the walls, I used Handy Dandy Ready Board. I made each wall three pieces thick to give them some structure, and I printed out a stencil basically to use for each piece. To give the windows a beveled look, I did one of the layers with a wider opening and then the other window slightly narrower. You can use whatever windows and shapes you like, but here are the ones I used. With the black and white files available for free on my website at pipplepusher.ca. Now if you're doing this build, you'll have five different sections of wall, each with three pieces. So that's 15 pieces that all look very similar. I highly recommend numbering them. So for example, one section of wall, all three pieces might be numbered one, and I recommend putting a little star or some kind of marker on the one that goes in front that has the slightly larger window opening, just to save you a lot of headache later. Once I had the walls cut, I went to cut the arches for the balcony. I used the top of my window as a kind of framework and ended up sort of trimming it off to make it look to my liking. I made each part of the balcony too thick, again, to get that beveled look, and I made the back one shorter so the balcony could sit nested in it. To texture my walls and balconies, I used balled up tin foil to get sort of a stonework look, and then used some texture rollers from Amazon to add a brickwork effect, because I did not like the thought of trying to go through all of these with a ballpoint pen. Um, I was actually really impressed by how well the rollers worked, I did have to push very hard and rock back and forth, but we got a good result in the end. Next, I colorized and added texture to those window files from earlier and printed them on acetate. The colorized files will be available for sale on my website at pipplepusher.ca. The next step is to start gluing the three pieces of each wall section together. I used hot glue for this. I found it worked just fine. Though I imagine white glue or tacky glue would do a good job as well. The next step, just a few quick tips to remember. You want the slightly larger cut window piece in front or closest to the altar. To get our windows just right, you also want to glue around the outermost edges of your piece, avoiding the window frame as much as you can. You also don't want to put any glue at the top of the piece. This is because we want to be able to slide our windows in once all our painting is done so that we don't get any glue or paint on the windows themselves. In theory, this should also allow us to have interchangeable windows in case we want to change out the stained glass for a different face or whatever. Next, we actually want to glue our framework together. You want to make sure your beveled windows are pointing into your church so you get that wonderful effect. And then hot glue the floor to the bottom of the wall first. Then turn it around so you're looking at the back side of the temple and hot glue up the seams to make sure that it's all held together. Really hold it till it dries completely. Next we want to glue our balcony pieces together. Each balcony of, will have one long and one narrow piece and of course each piece should have a bevel. Be sure that your pieces come together leaving about a half inch lip um, from the top of the back piece to the top of the forward piece for your balcony to actually sit on. Next I did some cutting to try to make the corners sit flush. I found this didn't show up great on camera so I've done a little diagram. This would be as if they were viewed from above and right now as you can see they would be just abutting one against the other and it doesn't look very realistic. To get the desired effect I moved one up against the other and then made a note of where the corner of the top piece would line up with the far corner. Then I moved the bottom piece so that it was abutting against the top piece and drew another mark from the top corner of the new abutment to the far corner. Once those lines were cut across, the pieces fit nicely together and you'll see a few examples of that upcoming. Sorry, this isn't the clearest explanation, but it's what I got. So here I am marking and 
cutting the abutments. It was tricky because it was a long vertical piece, but I also do it with some railings in a minute. So you'll get a few different examples with a few different angles. Hopefully it all makes sense. Let me know if it doesn't in the comments and maybe I'll do another video with a clearer shot. Once your pieces are trimmed, you can glue them together at the corner and then glue in your half inch XPS foam balcony piece as well. It should sit flush with the top of your wall pieces. Next up on our build list is our railings for our balconies. I started with a few pieces of framing just to cover up the seam where our two types of foam come together. To make these spindles, I used a bunch of push pins and just put them at relatively uniform distances along and then made another set of frameworks for the top banister, adding texture to those with a comb so it looked a bit like a wood grain and then hot gluing them onto the top of the push pins. And here's what it looks like once it was all textured and glued together, including the altar and the balconies. I was pretty happy with it at this point. I did freehand a diamond design onto all of the floor pieces. I was relatively happy with it. In hindsight, I think I should have used a stencil or something, but we live and we learn. Next, it was time to add our black Mod Podge layer. I enjoyed this step, it was very satisfying. One thing to note is if you are Mod Podging the inside of your window frame and along the top of your walls, you will need to cut through that or break through it later to slide your window into place. I actually found the window process to be uh, not as simple as I was hoping, but we got it to work in the end. I almost could have stopped after just the Blanche Podge. I kind of love the goth church. Alas, we weren't going for goth church, so I went in with the dry brushing and did two layers of tan paint and one layer of white, being sure to leave enough of the black poking through the cracks to give it a more three-dimensional look. I let the walls dry and then went in to do the floor. I went with quite a bright white for the floor as well as red diamonds in the little diamonds. I had to do two or three coats to make it really stick, but we got there in the end. The windows did end up being a bit of an ordeal to put in, but I was really happy with the result and they are now interchangeable if I want to put a different design in. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the build. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if you prefer a written out style, please do check out my blog at pipplepusher.ca where the full tutorial is. Thank you so much. And as always, happy crafting.